Welcome to Electron Line. Now that we know how to find the Fourier transform of the function e to the i omega t, because we know the Fourier transform is 2 pi times the delta function omega minus omega sub naught, we're now ready to find the Fourier transform when the input function is the cosine of omega t. Because we can write the function cosine omega t as the expansion of e to the i omega t plus e to the minus i omega t divided by 2, we could then find the Fourier transform by replacing f of t in this equation by this quantity right here and expanding it then to two separate integrals because of the plus there. We'll pull the one half out. So we multiply the e minus the i omega t by e to the i omega sub naught t in the first integral and e to the minus i omega sub naught t in the second integral. Of course, both integrals are still integrated from minus infinity to infinity. What this then looks like this then is equal to 1 half times the first integral is going to look like e to the minus i and then here we're going to have let's see here since we plug we pull the i out the minus out we have omega minus omega sub naught times t and that we still need the dt and that's our integral right here from minus infinity to infinity there we go and then we have plus the integral from minus infinity to infinity. Again, we're going to pull out the negative sign, so e to the minus, that makes both of those positive. There'll be i times omega plus omega sub naught times t dt. Like that. And then we basically have, we then find the integral, and then we can substitute for each one of these what these are equal to in terms of the Fourier transform. So this will then look like one half times the first transform here is going to be 2 pi times the delta function of omega minus omega sub naught and then plus 2 pi times the delta function, oh that's the wrong letter, we need the delta function times oh, the delta function of omega plus omega sub naught, like this. And then all we have to do here is take the one half and plug that in here and so this then becomes pi times the delta function of omega minus omega sub naught and then plus pi times the delta function of omega plus omega sub naught and that will then be the Fourier transform in the frequency domain if the input in the time domain is the cosine of omega t so this becomes the transform Fourier transform of that particular input function so you can see that once we know those old tricks, once we understand the relationship here, it's then very easy to come up with the Fourier transform of the cosine of omega t. And that's how it's done.